And now, WTOL 11 Sports, sponsored by Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. After breaking the franchise record for the longest win streak, the Toronto Blue Jays put an end to the Indians' winning ways with a 9-6 win last night. Now the question is, will the Tribe bounce back to take the final win in the four-game series? We go to today's game and Corey Kluber on the mound for Cleveland, but it was a rough start for the righty. First inning, two on, two out, and Toronto's Russell Martin gets a hold of that one. A three-run bomb to center. Blue Jays up to a quick 3-0 lead, and it didn't get much better for the Tribe's pitching. They gave up 13 13 runs on 14 hits in six innings. But then the seventh saw two on two out, and Jan Gomes gets a hold of this one. He takes it to the left field. That would drive home the lone run of the game for the Indians as they get trounced 17 to 1. Tigers looking to grab their sixth consecutive win, finishing up their series in Tampa, trailing by one through seven in the eighth, two on for Victor Martinez. Tampa goes for the double play, but not enough time at first. And Ian Kinsler takes advantage. He scores tie ball game. Then later in the inning, two on for Justin Upton, and he laces this one to deep center. That gives Detroit the lead, and they hang on to win it 5-1 to one, the final. Mudhens wrapping up their eight-game homestand, but down early, Indy scored on this sack fly to right in the first inning. So they go up one nothing real quick there. Then in the seventh, it's Danny Ortiz. He hits this one for the ribby, makes it a two nothing ball game. And the pitching was there for the Indians. Trevor Williams was money on the mound. Five strikeouts and just one hit in seven innings of work. Too much for the Hens. They fall two to zero. Coming into today's final round of the Bridgestone Invitational, Jason Day and Scott Piercy were tied for first, both at five under. We head to Firestone in Akron on the 10th. Piercy makes that long putt right there, enough to keep him still tied with Day at six under. But that's all about to change. Right here, Jason Day's about to sink this putt, and that would give him the lead at seven under. But wait, don't get too excited. The story of the day is Dustin Johnson working his way up the leaderboard from fourth to first. The win comes just a few weeks after his first major championship win at the U.S. Open. Back-to-back -back comeback, back-to-back -back come from behind wins, and it's Johnson's third World Golf Championship win. Now, speaking of golf, it's a sport that you can enjoy at any age. Just ask the bunch that shows up at a course near you the first and third Tuesday of every month. Dan Cummins has the story of these weekend warriors on the links. A morning at South Toledo Golf Club, and Bob Barger is collecting the cash for skins for the Toledo Post. The golf league began in 1921, part of local service clubs like Kiwanis, Rotary, Chamber, and the Toledo Post. Now, guys in their 70s, 80s, and yes, even 90s. 1952, and uh, I was a member of Toledo Post, and I, uh, they rooked me into being captain and activities director of the Post, so I was that for for years and years. <laughs> Barger, he's 94, moves a little slower, but he still loves to play golf as much as ever. Yeah, I think that's kept me going. I, I was always active. I went through the Navy uh, V-5 program and ended up as a Navy flight instructor. And uh, I had an active life for four years. I played uh, played service ball uh, quite a bit. Greg Fish from Toledo Traditions of Golf, hosting the league a lot of weeks. The golf is a game of a lifetime, so we see guys all the time that are well into their 80s and uh, enjoy coming out here. They enjoy the fun. They're laughing. You know, they're, they're having a good four or five hours together. And Bob Barger conceding one thing to his age. He quit playing tennis at 88. That was six years ago. Dan Cummins, WTOL 11. Great story there. And here's another one. What better way to spend the holiday weekend than to find out you'll be representing the red, white, and blue in Rio. Otsiko's grad A.J. Digby was at the Paralympic trials in Charlotte, North Carolina the past few days and competed well enough to earn a spot on the U.S. team. While the events haven't been released yet that he'll be in, I spoke with Digby just moments ago and he thinks he'll be competing in the 400 and 200 come August. Job well done there by, by Digby, I'd have to say. So 
congrats to him, wow. and uh, that's it for sports. Isn't that exciting? A local so guy making it to Rio. Yeah. Absolutely. What a great accomplishment. Good luck to him. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. Great. Well, what a beautiful day.